this <laughs> this uh, hearing is coming to order. Um, good morning. I am Councilwoman Rosie Mendez, and today I am serving as the chair of this subcommittee on landmarks, public siting, and maritime uses um, on behalf of Chair Ku, who could not be here today. We are joined by Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito, Council Members Kalos from Manhattan, Levin from Brooklyn, and Council Member Barron from Brooklyn. Uh, today we will be holding a hearing on a site selection and acquisition in the Speaker's District. LU number 727 is an application submitted by the Department of Sanitation, the Department of Housing Preservation and Development, and the Department of Citywide Administrative Services pursuant to Section 197C of the New York City Charter for the site selection and acquisition of property located at 207 to 217 East 127th Street, also known as Block 1792, Lots 5, and part of Lot 28 to facilitate the relocation of the Department of Sanitation's Manhattan District 11 garage, lot cleaning unit, and lot cleaning headquarters. This garage would replace the existing sanitation garage located at 343 East 99th Street in Manhattan, which Department of Sanitation reports is undersized, structurally unsound, and under pressure from hospital and residential development on the block. Due to overcrowding, sanitation vehicles are currently forced to park on the street. These, this application proposes that the city enter into a 20-year lease with the Potankin family of car dealers for the property for the new facility. The property owner would retrofit the existing three-story building to accommodate Department of Sanitation employee support space offices and small vehicle and accessory parking. It would also construct a one-story building addition which would store vehicles and include a wash bay and a mechanics bay. An outdoor at-grade parking area would accommodate up to 22 collection trucks, two front end loaders, and snow plow attachments. The facility would have a total capacity of 43 vehicles, I will now open to the public hearing on this item. The Department of Sanitation will present, and then we will hear from the speaker and from members of the public. Um, at uh, the hearing for the Department of Sanitation is Commissioner Catherine Garcia, Executive Director of the Real Estate Division, Arlana Davis, and Assistant Commissioner of the Legal Division, Stephen Bratakam? Okay. Thank you very much. Commissioner? Thank you. Good morning, Madam Speaker, Chair Mendez, and members of the City Council Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Siting, and Maritime Uses. As you said, I am Catherine Garcia, Commissioner of the New York City Department of Sanitation, and I am joined by Arlana Davis and Steve Brodaham from my department. Thank you for this opportunity to testify on the proposed relocation of the Department's Manhattan District 11 Sanitation Garage and lock cleaning headquarters to 207 East 127th Street in Manhattan's Community Board District 11. At the Department of Sanitation, our mission is to keep New York City healthy, safe, and clean by collecting, recycling, and disposing of waste, cleaning streets and vacant lots, and clearing snow and ice. To accomplish this mission, the department, like our brothers and sisters in the police department and fire departments, relies on a network of district garages scattered across the city. In fact, we have one district garage for each of the city's 59 community districts. It is our preference for the benefit of the residents we serve that our garages be located either within or as close as possible to their respective community districts. The department's Manhattan District 11 garage is currently located at the intersection of East 99th Street and First Avenue in an area zoned for residential uses. This building was constructed in 1920 and has been used by DSNY since 1967. There are many structural deficiencies with this building. The second floor slab is no longer able to even support light duty equipment. 
The, the facility is severely undersized, forcing us to store our collection trucks and other equipment on local streets. These working conditions are unsuitable for the men and women that serve the residents of Manhattan District 11. DSNY has for nearly 30 years sought to find a suitable location for this garage. And I just want to take you through some of the pictures of why we think it's not suitable. Uh, this is the outside of the garage, which has been covered in scaffolding for quite a while. Uh, this is the interior. This is the interior where sanitation workers are forced to come every day. Uh, these are the personnel facilities and the office spaces. Clearly, there's been no investment in this facility for a very, very long time. And it does impact the community. Uh, these are the trucks that are parked often on First Avenue or on 99th Street. After evaluating other potential sites, DSNY determined that the site in question would be suitable to provide employee support services and store the garage's equipment, together with an 8,700 square foot building addition to be constructed by the property owner that would accommodate mechanical equipment maintenance, truck washing, and winter vehicle storage. This site is comprised of the existing Mitsubishi building and adjacent parking lot at the western end of the Potamkin Auto Dealership property on East 127th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenues. And so these are, this is an overhead picture of the site that we're looking to lease. This is what it's looking in plan view of uh, the anticipated construction and where the parking would be. And then this is the renderings of what it will look like once it is completed and constructed. Um, the proposed site can also accommodate the department's lot cleaning offices, thus allowing the department to vacate the current leased office building used for the Manhattan lot cleaning unit and our lot cleaning unit headquarters at, at 177 East 123rd Street. Since DSNY began pursuing this site several years ago, representatives of the department have met numerous times with local elected officials, community board members, and local leaders. While these stakeholders have nearly unanimously expressed support for the goal of moving the garage off of the East 99th Street site, some have also expressed concerns with regard to air quality, public health, notably with respect to asthma, and traffic. The detailed environmental review for this application found that the facility will not have a significant adverse traffic, noise, air, or odor impacts. It will be a substantial improvement over the current open transit parking lot on the site, and it will enable DSNY to close its substandard East 99th Street garage facility in the storage of Manhattan District 11 equipment on public streets and maintain vital public sanitation and winter emergency response services for the district. We are proud of the fact that the DSNY's collection trucks use state-of-the-art technology and ultra-low sulfur B20 biodiesel fuel and include particulate filters and NOx controls, making a truck's emissions about as clean as a natural gas fuel truck. DSNY's trucks are actually 98% cleaner than the old unregulated diesel trucks, as we recently reported to the mayor and the city council under Local Law 38 of 2005. We have analyzed these issues according to CEQA standards, and the analysis has been reviewed by technical experts at DOT and DEP. The potential change in air pollutant emissions was found to be well under the significance threshold, even without taking credit for displacing the far less environmentally friendly diesel transit vans that currently park on the open lot. In addition, the garage will feature four state-of-the-art electric vehicle charging stations for the district's SUVs and sedans, which are mostly all electric or hybrid electric. Traffic impacts have also been thoroughly studied and found not to be significant. All refuse will be dumped on shift at the new East 91st Street Marine Transfer Station to be completed in late 2018, early 2019, and not stored in trucks at the garage, thereby avoiding odors. Collection trucks will be washed weekly on site and will never be stored on the public street. That's about twice as often as our normal protocols for other garages. Another community concern was that equipment stored on the site would be visible to the neighborhood. In response to these concerns, we made changes to the design to include a precast panel wall and roll up doors in an attractive design that will screen the equipment from view from the local sidewalks and streets. 
Finding an appropriate site to relocate this garage in Manhattan was challenging. Uh, when planning and siting any potential sanitation district garage, the department must consider important factors that include adequate size, appropriate zoning, convenient access to truck routes, reasonable proximity to the district to be serviced, and of course cost. As discussed in detail in the ULERP applications analysis of alternate sites considered, we also had to take into account the city's plans to redevelop certain sites for economic development or housing, as well as the potential cost and disruption from the relocation of existing businesses on a given site. In considering the relocation of Manhattan District 11 garage, the department evaluated several alternative sites, including some suggested by members of the community. The department considered the now vacant East 126th Street MTA bus depot as a potential option. However, its past as a historic burial ground for African Americans makes the site inappropriate for such use. In addition, that site is separately proposed as a mixed-use development and the construction of the Harlem African Burial Ground Memorial. The department also considered a site located at 203 West 155th Street within Community District 10 for a multi-district garage. However, this site is currently zoned for residential and commercial uses and is only partially city-owned. Constructing a sanitation facility would require condemnation and demolition of existing residential and commercial properties on the site and the eviction of several small businesses. The department considered a site at 2137 First Avenue at East 110th Street that is currently owned by Con Edison and used as a utility substation. DSNY has approached Con Edison about this property, but they have repeatedly stated that the site is a key asset in meeting the city's future energy requirements and is a focus of Con Ed's long-term planning and service delivery needs. As such, Con Ed has declined to discuss the sale of the site, and utility properties are not subject to condemnation by the city. Lastly, at the recommendation of Community Board 11, the department considered siting the new garage on city-owned property on Randalls Island. However, the sites recommended by the Community Board are all currently fully utilized by either DEP or FDNY. In addition, locating a facility on Randalls Island would raise concerns related to access to the community via the Triborough Bridge, which would be problematic during winter weather operations. In conclusion, using the Potamkin building and parking lot provides the only available solution to the current pressing need to vacate the aged and decrepit Manhattan District 11 garage and in the storage of its trucks on public streets. To provide better working conditions to the men and women that serve Manhattan District 11 and maintain reliable sanitation services to the community. I strongly urge this committee and the City Council to approve this site selection ULERP application before you and support the relocation of the Manhattan District 11 sanitation garage and lot cleaning office to the Potamkin site. Thank you for your consideration today. I am now happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much, Commissioner. I will now turn this over to our speaker, Melissa Mark Viverita. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Commissioner, for being here. Um, in the presentation, I, I know that I, I also wanted to, I, I don't know if we have it easily available. We had um, done, uh, wanted to, you had shown photos, but we actually had staff go out and take a video so that people can really get a sense of the area. And I'll just have that play in the background. You can, you can mute it, I guess, um, but play it. You want to mute it? Take out the sound so that we don't hear it. Um, so that you can get a real visual. I mean, the street we're talking about, I mean, the, the trucks are constantly parked outside on the street. The equipment is out on the street. This block is actually the main entrance of Metropolitan Hospital um, right here on 99th Street. And this has been an issue that has been brought to my attention since I became an elected official, dealing with the uh, Met cab the Metropolitan Hospital cab, um, the issue of relocating this facility has always, always been something that has been present in the community's mind. So it's something that I've been working on, something that I've been interested in seeing, um, and I'm glad that we've been able to engage in a conversation. Um, we also do have a senior residential facility on the corner of 2nd Avenue on 99th Street, and we also have Draper Hall, which is being built right there on 99th Street and 1st Avenue, which will also be senior facilities 
and senior building. Um, so this is just untenable, right? And, and the facility, in terms of the photos that you showed on the inside, we clearly understand um, that the structure is deeply flawed uh, and unsuitable for both the needs of uh, the sanitation department and the broader community, and that it's been three decades since the building was found to be structurally unsound, with the second floor slab deteriorating and unable to support vehicles, and an exterior wall held up by permanent scaffolding, as, the, as you can see there. The current garage is also under, undersized, as you indicated, so that sanitation employees are forced to park trucks and equipment along the surrounding streets. This creates conflict with both the Metropolitan Hospital, which is located directly across the street, and the surrounding residential neighborhood. This garage certainly needs a new facility and a new location, and always, always, these kinds of conversations become controversial. Any sort of siting of any sort of public facility, sanitation facility, um, social service facility always becomes a major conversation. And so uh, understanding those challenges, I know that we have all been hearing, you have heard, we have heard uh, the concerns that uh, the 127th Street facility brings with it. Uh, the idea that the garage will be largely unenclosed and community members have raised issues around noise, air quality, odors, traffic, and quality of life. You've mentioned some of the adjustments that have been made on the facade and, mm -hmm. and covering so that from the street perspective you cannot see the equipment. Um, equity is another major consideration here. Uh, the community also has concerns uh, that, that the uh, Community Board District 11, the boundaries, uh, house District 10's garage, which is found on 131st Street, and the proposed relocation will increase the concentration of refuse collection within a few blocks, and so this is an issue of concern. Thus far, the administration has not responded to calls for investing in a long-term multi-district facility solution akin to the award-winning Spring Street facility, and I really do hope that the administration can work towards a solution that responds with sensitivity to community concerns and ensures environmental equity and fair share considerations. Uh, and obviously, you said it's a 20-year lease, so the idea of really working collaboratively to look at a long-term solution uh, is something that I definitely would like to uh, discuss further. So what are your thoughts about that in terms of, a, of working together collectively to figure out a long-term solution to this? I, I would really welcome the opportunity to work collaboratively both with the council as well as with folks in the community about finding a long-term option. I mean, Manhattan 10 is also going to need a new facility in the not-too-distant future. Uh, that's a leased facility at this time. But in order to ensure that we continue to service Upper Manhattan, I think that I would love to think through with the community where we could site a multi-district garage similar to Spring Street. So would you be open to maybe convening that sort of a working group as soon as we could? As soon as possible. Community board, I'd my office, you know, other stakeholders, and see if we can just start engaging in that. Yes. I mean, I mean the, the challenge for us really always is locating a large enough site Perfect. Uh, with footprint. Could you go over, I know you, you kind of mentioned it in your testimony, but on the issue of air quality, obviously, and um, the trucks and the equipment, for instance, you talk a little bit more about the fleet the number of trucks Certainly. that will be housed here, uh, the technology of those trucks, they're more f uh, environmentally friendly from what I gather from your testimony. So if you could just describe the fleet itself that will be housed there and then some of the composition of it, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah, so Technology-wise. Uh, all, all of our, our heavy-duty fleet has uh, very significant air quality controls on it, filters. Um, so that we are meeting the highest quality standard and that actually is going to get a little bit even more aggressive in the future with some of the newer model years. We'll have to meet even higher standards. Uh, but we anticipate that there will be um, 20 either collections or dual bin trucks at the site. So the dual bins look like a collection but they're split in the back. Uh, there'll be four salt spreaders. There'll be one small spreader. Uh, four front end loaders, one tow truck, one forklift, nine passenger cars, and one what's called a house truck for a total of about 41 vehicles. And is that what is at the 99th Street facility now? Yeah, there'll be two. There'll be two trucks that are coming over from lot cleaning. Most will be kept on their parking lot, but just to manage uh, logistics for that particular group of employees. And would you say that the vast majority of the services offered by the fleet is for Community Board 11? Oh, absolutely. All of it is designed for Community Board 11. Okay, so there's no other 
uh, communities or neighborhoods that are being served? No, I mean every every district garage serves its own community. Right, and the one that's relocated on Park Avenue under the viaduct, 131st Street, is solely for District 10. It's solely for District 10. Right, but then obviously that becomes the issue of being so closely you know, in the same general area, but also that we, Community Board 11, is housing the trucks and the fleet for the neighboring community. That's why the long-term solution, I think, is definitely one that we welcome to have that conversation. Right. No, I mean, it's, it's while our preference is always to have the garage within the community board, uh, mainly for service reasons, uh, if you think about it, the in a snowstorm, the shorter the distance a truck has to go back for a shift change, the quicker it's back on its route plowing, uh, rather than having to travel a great deal of distance uh, to that back to its garage to get the new person who's going to take over. Um, but it's not unusual that we do end up, because of the limitations on where we can site garages, that you end up with uh, m many districts in one community board. For example, Spring Street is actually three district garages. Um, it, is, it is Manhattan Board 1, it is Manhattan 2, and it is Manhattan 5 are all housed within that building, which is part of the reason that building is, is so big, is that it's holding several garages in it. And in terms of the shorter distance and, and getting to the routes in a timely manner, particularly under adverse conditions, is why you would say, although it's been thrown out there, that Randall's Island is not a suitable location. Right. I mean, I, I'll just put it this way. We know that you, my, my pet other project that someday I'd like to see done, uh, I know that it takes 45 minutes for a community board eight truck to get to their, to start their snow plowing r routes uh, during a storm. That means that an, they've lost an hour and a half at least every single time we do a shift change uh, because they're at 215th Street. So, I mean, it makes a difference to us and we're much more effective the closer we are to the people that we serve. And lastly, is, um, is it, can, you, can you commit on the record that, that they, there will be no trucks or equipment parked on the streets? This has been yes. really the, you can't commit to that. Yes. All right, we're going to hold you to that. Uh, so I those are my, my... I will hold my district superintendent to that as well. Um, I want to thank you for the responses. Again, I definitely will work with my colleagues regarding the working group that we can establish to look at a more long-term permanent solution uh, and I also do want to continue to thank you for the partnership uh, on the attention you're paying to 125th Street. Oh, absolutely. Yes, I, I know that it has made a, a big difference. Obviously, many challenges in that area of 125th and Lex, uh, but we have gotten some uh, the issues addressed, and uh, definitely the cleanliness is one of them, uh, and other issues that we're trying to tackle with the administration. So I, I want to thank you for your diligence on that and your partnership on that. And I think those are my questions right now. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Councilmember Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Madam Speaker. Just a few questions. The present location, is that city owned or are you leasing with the uh, present? The current location is owned by the Health and Hospitals Corporation. So it is city owned, but not by DSNY? Yes, it's not designated as DSNY, so. Okay. And the, loca the location that you're considering moving to, it's uh, how long are the terms of the lease? The lease is 20 years. 20 years. Is there an opportunity for the city to actually buy that location and have that permanently? We're not current, we do not currently in this have an option to buy, yeah. um, but should they decide that they would like to sell, I am always open to purchasing property uh, for the long term. And so after 20 years, what do you anticipate will be the status of DSNY? Um, after 20 years, I'm hopeful that we will have worked closely with the council to figure out a long-term solution for a multi-district garage for Upper Manhattan. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilmember Barron. Um, Commissioner, I can vouch that I do know that you like long-term solutions and permanent sites. Um, let me ask you this. This is being handled as a 20-year lease rather than an acquisition because the owners They're are not currently interested. not interested? Right. I mean, and, and many of our facilities across the city are leased facilities. It's not an unusual thing for us to end up in a leased facility. I, of course, always prefer to own. Um, but at this time, it was rather than trying to go through a condemnation, it made more sense to lease the property. And um, in this... But to be clear, if I'm not mistaken, that site formerly was a city-owned site. 
and, and the Harlem very- Empowerment Zone decided to create that auto mall, which I really thought was a bad decision, and disposed it over to a private entity. And it's unfortunate that we're even having this conversation, that they're not looking at uh, being um, benevolent back when the city is asking for some consideration. But, uh, but originally that was a city-owned site. Right. No, I mean, I, I actually, I will say this on the record. I think it is a mistake for the city ever to sell any property it owns. Uh, period. Full stop. And I, because I find that there, are in there's almost always going to be a need in the future, for this for city services that you don't anticipate when you make the sale. Yeah. Um, they're not not everyone in city government agrees with me, but that's just my personal preference. Madam Speaker, when was this property sold? Well, I think I'm as part of the recommendation. I was not an elected official at that time. I forget what the years were, but it was recommended as an you know empowerment zone project, and it was uh, became an auto mall. It became you know sell cars in that area. But that whole lot used to be city owned, and I think it was disposed over at the request of the empowerment zone as an economic development project for that um, for that purpose. Uh, and so that was many years ago. I mean, de- definitely 12 years that I've been in office, it was before that, but within maybe 15 years. Um, Commissioner, the city usually has um, opt-out clauses for leases and or um, additions where they can re-sign. Um, does this lease uh, with Potemkin have uh, options where the city can terminate and or Resign to have extra time at the site. We have two five-year options on the lease. So if we needed to stay, we have two five-year options. Thank you. Um, Councilman Barron, did you have a follow-up question to that? Yes, just for sake of clarity, you have two five-year options. That's the 10 years that we're talking about? No, we have it's Oh, 20 it's years beyond the 10 beyond years. The ten, the ten okay, years. thank you. Actually, one thing I did forget to ask. So the facility uh, right now, the one that's dilapidated where the employees work. Mm -hmm. So once you vacate that, what happens to that property? We would give it back to DCAS and they would dispose of it. Okay, so then obviously that's an additional set of conversations that we, I think, are already having, but we are definitely concerned of what would happen. I mean, I would uh, assume that that, you know that will be something you'd be included in what should be the future of the site. It's really, once we vacate, we don't have a lot of say. I understood. But I mean, at least at that point, if there is any sort of uh, city disposition which has to come before the council, we can engage in conversation about what might be in, of interest to the community to happen there as well. But okay, thank you. So because you said it was it was HHC. HHC. Is, right. It, so then the it goes property. back to DCAS. It goes, and goes to HHC and right. then I, they, I guess people figure out what to do with it. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner, I understand that um, part of this a structure at the facility will be unenclosed, is that correct? So there's an open parking lot, uh, and then there are enclosed spaces for the personnel, and for, uh, particularly for snow equipment, we don't keep snow equipment outside, uh, because it tends to corrode because of the salt. Um, And then there'll be space for mechanics inside in order to do the smaller repairs on the trucks. And then there's a wash bay inside to make sure that we can clean them on a regular basis. But then the other trucks will be kept in the parking lot behind the the precast fence. And um, why is where the trucks are going to be kept or unenclosed? Is that better? Is it can we enclose it? And what kind of cost or work would be? It's enclosed. It doesn't have a roof. But I, I don't think that that. Keeping trucks outside is something we do in many other areas where it's obviously, actually, in some cases it is on the public street. I'm spending a lot of time in in the West 30s these days on the public street as well. Um, But it doesn't hurt the trucks for them to be outside, and there there wasn't a difference really in air quality because uh, they're not running while they're sitting in the parking lot. Um, Can you tell us um, at this facility what uh, what hours are that the trucks are entering and exiting? Um, So the the primary shift is starts at 6 a.m. and they would usually leave with between 6 6 20 after roll call uh, and then they usually return um, sometime between noon and 2 depending on how their route has gone and whether or not they 
have dumped their, their truck on shift, which we would anticipate because it's sort of right down the block or will be. Um, then there are some occasions where we'll, we'll send out a truck on the 4 to 12 shift, uh, but that's usually much smaller. Our primary shift is between 6 and 2. Thank you. And um, how frequently are the collection trucks washed? So usually our collection trucks are washed every two weeks, but we have committed to wash them once a week here uh, to ensure, we don't anticipate that there would have been any odors, but to just be doubly protective to make sure that there are no odor issues within the community. We also agreed to comply with the more stringent M1 zoning requirements around odors rather than the M3, which it currently is in. Thank you. Are there any other questions, Madam Speaker? No? Councilmember Barron. Okay. Um, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. I will now call up William Wang from New York City H&H. &H. Hello. Good afternoon. Um, my name is William Wang. I am the, I'm a surgeon and I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Metropolitan Hospital. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner. They've, they've been excellent uh, neighbors. Uh, and thank you, Speaker, uh, for the pictures that you showed and the, the video. Um, I would, I'll make my statements very brief. We wholeheartedly support the movement of the sanitation department um, from outside around Metropolitan Hospital as well as Metro 99. I can attest that the, uh, the parking on the streets which surrounds Metropolitan Hospital on two, it, on two sides is a problem for the hospital. Not only when they wash the vehicles does it aerosolize the, uh, the backwash and the, and the odors come through Metro Metropolitan Hospital, but the parking specifically on East 99th Street is at our clean air intake for the hospital. And this air goes into the birthing units of the hospital where expectant mothers are, are ready to deliver. Uh, we've tried to carbon filter this, and there is no amount of carbon filtering we're able to do to, to, to remove the odor. The other thing that also occurs is that the, the standing water that occurs because of the storage on the streets becomes a mosquito problem for, the, for not our staff, but also for our patients. The entrance into, the, in, into our loading zone is on East 99th Street. The, 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 the sanitation trucks that are parked there become prohibitive for us to get deliveries at time. They also are a problem for the Metro 99 residents who have complained to our cab that they are unable to access their accessor ride in front of their building. They have to actually walk over to Second Avenue on the corner in order to get into the vehicles and go wherever they need to go. Uh, so I'm happy to answer any questions, but I think you guys did an excellent job in portraying the, uh, the pushback that we have been giving uh, the sanitation department. Thank you. Madam Speaker, do you have any questions? Thank you for, testimony. Thank you for your testimony, and yes, uh, I don't have any questions as well. Thank you so much. And um, Orlando Rodriguez is here from the office of the Manhattan Borough President. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, as you said, I'm, I'm here speaking on behalf of Ms. Brewer, the Manhattan Borough President. Uh, and we are, um, we are concerned about many issues surrounding this proposal. Um, the current facility at 99th Street has been considered unsafe for several decades now. Um, however, the solution does not solve any of the site planning concerns long raised by the neighborhood, including those raised during this process. Uh, additionally, uh, this long-awaited garage uh, is located in a community that continues to shoulder the weight of numerous city facilities, um, but will not solve the long-term needs of the Department of Sanitation and this neighborhood. First, the location of the proposed site presents many of the same issues associated with the current garage location. The immediate area is mixed use in nature, 
uh, with development proposals that will further residential density nearby, including uh, the proposal for the African Burial Ground Museum located at the uh, MTA Bus Depot at 126th Street. Uh, additionally, by relocating the uh, M11 garage to 127th Street, East Harlem, as you stated, Madam Speaker, earlier, uh, will now house two sanitation garages in its district. Secondly, the current relocation plan highlights, as was also previously stated, the pitfalls of releasing city assets without long-term planning or community involvement. Um, it's incredibly disappointing that we find ourselves in the position of leasing under unfavorable terms, land that the city owned and then sold, while this 99th Street facility uh, was considered uh, untenable. The solution that's been presented, um, paying rent on land it once owned for a period of 20 years, uh, is unacceptable and certainly not a sustainable practice by the city. Lastly, even if the site planning was appropriate and all the alter alternative locations were fully vetted and exhausted, uh, we would remain concerned about the lack of equity paid to the design of the facility, which again, Madam Speaker alluded to earlier. Uh, one prevailing message that has been delivered by the community board and other neighborhood residents uh, repeatedly in conversation and testimony is that the location could be acceptable in fact, a multi-garage facility would be acceptable if it mirrored the quality of garages recently developed and proposed in other areas, more affluent areas of the city. Uh, the M1, 2, and 5 garage, which was also brought up earlier, uh, located at Hudson Square in Manhattan Community District 2, should serve as the model for all sanitation garages in the future and the same effort and care and sensitivity to community concerns that was demonstrated there um, should be demonstrated in Community District 11. So uh, we would ask the council in coordination with relevant city agencies to pursue conversations, not just for the long-term solution, but even for a better temporary site, um, one that ensures design and quality uh, are on par with some of the more recent garage proposals and developments. Thank you very much for your time and consideration. Thank you. Please hold on. Madam Speaker, do you have any questions? Thanks. Just to clarify, there already are two existing facilities in this community board. It's just being relocated within the same community board. Um, so that's, that's, you know, that's definitely an issue that um, we have concerns about and we've expressed on multiple occasions to the city, not only to sanitation, but to other agencies about uh, ensuring that every community district does take care of its own facility, of its own needs. Uh, because we have, unfortunately, certain communities that are overburdened, and East Harlem clearly is one of them. But I'm not opposed to housing our own facility um, and even considering relocating that facility within our own boundaries. Uh, and I think that for the purpose of what we've seen, uh, and again, that this is an outstanding issue, um, you know, it's something that I would seriously consider with some additional adjustments. And uh, and I know that there's been a lot of conversations that, uh, it, uh, that the, we've had with the sanitation. So I hear the concerns of the borough president, um, understanding that this is a temporary facility. Uh, we are looking for a long-term solution as long as we can convene some sort of a working group where we can find that permanent solution. Uh, I think that's, I'm glad that to hear that that's something that we can engage in, and I'm sure the borough president would probably be part of that as Absolutely. well. Of the other garages that you have mentioned in your testimony. I know um, the one on Spring Street is LEED certified, um, but of, the, of, of all those other garages, which ones are leased or, you know, temporary to Department of Sanitation? Do, do you know? I'm, I'm sorry, could you, would you mind clarifying? You, you referenced that the East Harlem should replicate 
some of the other state-of-the-art garages, which I know are LEED certified. Right. And so I'm asking if you know whether those other garages are temporary um, leased facilities. Do you? No. You do not, not, not know? Not that I'm aware of. Um, Madam Commissioner, could you answer the question? So are, are the leased facilities LEED certified? Is that what your question is? I think, I think, I think uh, Rosie's talking about, like what you alluded to, to the Spring Street facility, the one that is state of the art, and the one that you mentioned. Is that a temporary facility or is that a permanent facility? No, uh, the Spring Street garage was LEED certified. It was, uh, we condemned the property from UPS and took it over as city property. Uh, it did take me more than 12 years to get that piece of property constructed though, so, and while everyone loves it now, if you go back and look at the record, uh, that local community rejected us and sued us for a very long time. So right. now, it, now they love it. Uh, but no, we were not embraced with open arms at the time. So you, Department of Sanitation owns it, and to make that state of the art building took over a decade? Yes. Okay. Um, and we actually, it's technically, it's, a, a business condo because UPS is actually on the bottom floor still. Um, so it was to get us out of the park uh, required some creativity, but still took, you know, a very, very, very long time to get done. Thank you, Madam Commissioner, and thank you for your testimony, sir. Thank you. Um, are there any other public speakers, anybody who would wish to testify? Okay, seeing none. Uh, Madam Speaker, would you like to say anything else? Okay, uh, public hearing on LU number 727 is now being, uh, is now closed and the item is laid over for future consideration. Thank you very much.